this is the future of gaming emulation in VR with a fully customized environment with fully functional gaming systems to play every game from your childhood that you legally own and this is an environment which I've set up for me with my personal tastes, games and set up that take me back to the better days when I had a dog. <laughs> my dog was breathing, mind you, back in the day. This one is not. But it was the same colour dog. And I'm just going to take a look so that you can see what's possible. Because everything that you see here is possible for you to put together. You could replicate this entire room exactly how I have it if you wanted to. But of course, it's not about how I have it set up. It's how you might want to have it set up. And what systems, what TVs, how you want it laid out, the lighting, videos that you might want to watch and play, ornaments, arcade machines and I've got a couple of Astro City set up here and in fact in my own VIP lounge I have a couple of Astro City set up and I thought I'll bring some of the things that I like in my own VIP lounge into the space and it makes me feel at home. You got ET Monopoly, Donkey Kong, and a very snowy, picturesque scene outside, which is somewhat ironic. Today in Perth, we had 41 degrees, 42 actually, degrees Celsius. It's very, very hot. It's not Fahrenheit, guys. It's well over 100. Have a little MAME machine here. Magazines. Nokia phone. DJ desk. Mac. PC. Tape deck. Everything that you'd want in your own emulation gaming man cave and apologies to any ladies watching but 99% of my audience are in fact men for some reason <laughs> and uh, I think it's the guys that typically like this sort of thing in gaming setups but it won't be stereotypical Anyone can enjoy Jar Ewing. A little bit behind that uh, wall shelf there. I'll have to fix that at some point. Electronic Gaming Monthly magazines. The other cat. Hey. Commodore 64. Oh, they are jumping in and out there a little. Atari 5200 actually, this has got 8-bit Atari loaded on it. And the original phone from Wall Street, Michael Douglas. You guys know that reference. And platforms that we have here now getting a little bit more specific. PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and we also have Commodore Amiga, 
Susanna Hoff from the Bangles. So cute. The only movie she starred in, The All Nighter. A little custom poster behind the back there. More 80s and 90s on the picture. Fish Tank, R2D2, Nintendo 64. And we've got the GameCube over the other side here and just lots of little bits of memorabilia. Boxes, console boxes, typical of a collection. The old bike, I wish I could get the BMX in here but not available just yet. Got the Super NES up the top and the GameCube. And then of course the Atari VCS on the floor. And then any movie you want in the middle. Tron posters, VIP lounge posters, Star Wars. Margot Robbie. Got to have Margot Robbie if you're an Australian. And it just completes it. Fireplace. And another fireplace where the dog is uh, laid out and sleeping. Another cat. And of course the fish tank over there that we saw. And if we just take a, another look, or by the way, the Inception, <laughs> a little spinning top. I keep it there, guys, just so that I know if I'm in base reality or not. I could just move into this TV. Oh, I think I switched on something, did I? I thought I did on the way through. I might have just been, no, no, didn't switch the TV. Oh, I'm switching that TV on. <laughs> Let's go through the other side. And just admire the room from inside the TV. War Games. Grand Theft Auto. And again guys, it's, this is not so much about what I've set up here. It's the fact that you can set up this entire thing exactly how I have it. Or do something completely different. And how amazing this is to come out of this TV. I turn around here to see the subpixels <laughs> on the TV. That is freaky. Now, performance-wise, it's a little challenging. Uh, some multiple things running at the moment to get the fish tank going. So, and I some recording as well. But again, guys, before we get just into the games. And apologies if you feel like this is a bit of a slow entry to this, but you've got to realise it's been a long time before something like this has been made available. And we'll get to it at the end in terms of where you can get all this and how you can do it yourself. By the way, the Spacey's Arcade little uh, animated uh, video, which I also have in my real VIP lounge. Because I sat here... Uh, once I've set all this up, and you know, I, you can sit here and, in fact, you can sit here and just listen to the fish tank and the fireplace and just relax. <laughs> you can just relax in here, surrounded by all your games in a beautiful environment. It really is something. Um, I'll probably turn that TV off, it's a bit of a glare. But yeah, it really is something. And watching movies is the same thing. I put on a movie and I just sit here in this position. And remembering, guys, you're seeing this in 2D, but in 3D VR, this whole, I'm sitting in the room. And this couch where I'm sitting on lines up with my actual couch. <laughs> so I actually feel like I'm sitting in here. And I've already watched two full movies, Colour of Money, which is running right now, posters up there on the wall behind the back. And this is a classic movie, guys, with uh, Paul Newman and Tom Cruise, some fantastic acting, not a well-known movie of Tom Cruise's. Definitely go watch it. And again, in this environment, just watching an, an old 80s 
classic music like Color of Money. Oh, it's just something else. And I sat back with a few beers and just relaxed and enjoyed the entire movie. And I literally did forget that I was in VR. Once you get drawn into the movie and the surroundings are just here in the fireplace and, you know, it's, um, it's amazing, guys. <laughs> okay, so if we want to play the Atari, for example, I could just click it and I can play with actually the, the hand controllers uh, or an arcade stick if I want to. But you know guys, this is just... <laughs> this is just crazy. You know, and, and I remember when I was younger, I had... Um, I had a big TV like this where we used to play the Atari in, in front, you know, and the dog would sit down and... And I can, you know, if I'm not recording, I could be sitting on the floor and, like, sitting at the low level of the floor like I used to play. Um, and if there's any sort of stutter and stuff, guys, the thing is, is that it's running multiple things at once at the moment. And normally when you play, it's, you know, you need to sort of turn a few things off just to give yourself a, a, the maximum um, performance. Having said that, you know, it does handle quite a few things at once. That's <laughs> the sound of the Atari, right? Um, so yeah, you know, and you know, I can pick up, take out any one of these, and you know, grab basketball. Um, I can actually throw it at it, and get that card out of the way, and start that up again. Love how we got the, uh, you know, the static white noise, and then we got basketball playing, guys. So yeah, uh, you know, full set of movies. Um, at the end of the day, you can hop into your inventory, look at your movies, and you can have all your movies loaded. Um, and if you wanted, you know. You can put all the labels and stuff, and I haven't set them up for a lot of the others, but I will do that. And yeah, and then you can just play what you want to play. So if we want to get rid of this, we can uh, eject. Oops. And put in Ghostbusters. Oh. There you go. Oh yeah, it gets a little bit hung up here, because I actually put this video recorder behind this piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes a bit funny when it first loads, but it'll be fine when it comes back in. Alright guys, well let's start by getting into this little Japanese corner here and play the Sega Astro. And first of all what we can do is we can just turn this volume up on this cab. There we go, move ourselves into prime position. I just need to now connect ourselves and can use a real controller. Put some coins in. <clears throat> hey guys, <laughs> I can play in my room. And of course you can load any any game you want. Um, the back end of all the games is RetroArch, for those of you who are familiar with it. So majority of RetroArch cores, including multiple main variations, are all available to you. <laughs> Got this plant around me. And those of you who've watched the channel and seen my coverage of the Arcade Time Capsule, which is just an amazingly realistic arcade, well, you can get your practice in while you're at home. <laughs> and then head down to Half Deck's uh, fantastic um, Arcade Time Capsule to play the real machines. 
really is like having your own little emulation station on a couple of Sega Astros, which I do have set up in my own VIP lounge in real life. And so it's quite funny to replicate that here. So anyway, guys, get the get the gist, get the idea, right? <laughs> so hop out of here, can turn that sound down. Now, if we actually um, go across, we've got MK2 here, which who knows? By the time of this video, maybe it will be working in the arcade time capsule. But if it's not, guys, then uh, you can uh, play it here. Okay. Start to continue. Yeah, I'm going to need more practice before I get to the uh, before I go to the ATC. <laughs> Guys, this is just this is just amazing. Like, I just really feel like I'm in my own little little astro corner at home. Guitar sitting to the right, ET down there. And of course, you could have music going on in the background. Um, I've got music mixtapes as well, uh, video tapes for listening to old '80s stuff. Have that going in the background, of course, with copyright. Can't do that, but you get the idea. So yeah guys, um, let's hop out of here. And the, and the thing is guys, is that this is, they continue to run. And that's the thing, it does affect performance a little though, because obviously the more of these you have running, the more retro arch instances you have running, the more it can sort of tax your performance. But geez, it's pretty good. You can let, you can let them run and you can still do other things. So it is pretty impressive. All right, and I've actually got another little main main box down here, guys. Which um, I mean, we can we can quickly fire that up. Um, there are lots of other cabinet options. While well, that is firing it up, actually, I'll just show you. And if we go into the systems here, you've got all sorts of uh, other arcade cabinets. You could actually bring in a whole Mortal Kombat cabinet if you wanted to. <laughs> Hang on, stick that out here. Gonna make a mess of the place. Yeah, it's a big cab, <laughs> but you can do things and get it positioned in, in a way that fits a bit nicer. But again, we're not gonna do all that stuff today. Just showing you that there are. Oh, sorry. I guess there is just yeah, a few more. Operation Wolf, Neo Geo, Pac Man. Got the full Star Wars sit down cockpit. That you could play in pretty crazy pretty crazy guys there you go double dragon but uh yeah i won't play double dragon you see all these these games before but just sort of showing you how you can have it sort of set up quite a nice little um corner here for playing arcade games just turn that off cruise around now on the main desk here the mac is actually a inanimate object so you can't actually do anything with that um, so I probably will swap that out. It was just one of the nice little props that uh, I got uh, and just in terms of props to show you quickly all this user-generated content there's just heaps and heaps and heaps of things that you can you can grab and you know I want a little lunchbox you can do that. Um, by the light here got him up on the shelf over there. So yeah, Christmas presents, cans, put all my cans up there somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, so many things guys you can just grab, CD cases, uh, there's so much now available. Nice little uh, it's a Commodore 64 box. So yeah, um, plenty of things that you, you have access to to build this sort of uh, setup. Uh, and yeah, the Mac was a, a bit of an inanimate object. Now the PC is an interesting one. I've actually got a PC hooked up. I did have it hooked up to this tower down the bottom here, which is really cool, but there's some configuration challenges 
there, which we won't get into right now. So at the moment I've got this sort of console set up uh, to play PC stuff. So I'll just fire this up. The, I mean, the cool thing here is, guys, just you, <laughs> you're in a little PC. And this just brings back, brings back memories. Get ourselves hooked in here. Uh, it's got all the files for Doom in this case, so and we're running up. We're playing Doom now. We're playing Doom. <laughs> yeah, I think I can play this actually with my VR controller as well. You can do it with the keyboard, of course. Um, yeah, it's like that. Hey, I'm too young to die. I remember this, huh? And here I go, yeah, I'm just using the, the uh, VR controllers. Whoops, find the fire button. Oh shit, that's the map. Which one's the fire? Oh, it's the back, it's the back one. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Go back in. All right, noob, noob. Yeah, there it is, it's left. <laughs> it's great. All right, cool, cool, cool. Well, there's a little bit of working out you need to do. But yeah, I feel like fully fully uh, playable. Uh, and of course, if I did want to take, uh, take the controllers off and use the joystick, I can do that as well. Yeah, it looks uh, interesting. So it looks like some of it's configured, but maybe not not everything. I did, yeah, the joystick's not at this stage. Let me make it smaller, guys, when you have performance issues. Remember that? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, from back in the day. But, yeah, so obviously the controller's not set up for this. I was playing Screamer earlier, and it was working fine on the controller, so I have to use the VR controllers for, for this one. But look, again, you get the idea, and if I hop out of here a bit, um, and just go to, down to DOS, floppy disk, then yeah, like Comanche, Doom 2, Command and Conquer, Duke Nukem, uh, Gunship, Grand Prix, you know, all the classics, Lemmings, IndyCar, Mech Warrior. Monkey Island, guys, all the classics. So you can you can play any of these. Um, there's the Screamer, Pimple Games, Need for Speed, Warcraft. Too many classics, guys. Too many classics. So yeah, so look, that's the that's a quick look at the PC again. We'll just have a quick look at all these uh, for today, just so you get a bit of an idea. Oh, you can chuck that at it. Um, yeah, again, you've got a tape deck here, and I could play that, but I will stop it because it's going to be copyright because that's seal crazy. Can get labels and make all the labels correct. Um, it's just it's so cool how you just click and push things around with your hand. I could hook up something to this as a rather unique. I don't even know what TV this is, but I haven't got anything hooked up to that at the moment, guys. But I will do at some point. Bit of Crash Bandicoot memorabilia. And then we're around to the Atari, uh, which is my my personal favourite. Now I've got a slight problem with the uh, the set, uh, setup at the moment because it's not remembering the um, it's not remembering that that it's a uh, Atari 800. So I just go into the config. There is a setting to save the settings, but it's not doing it. I think I have to do it in RetroArch. And so forth, but anyway, um, that's not the settings I want. I want system settings and see, yeah, it says Atari 5200. So I want to go backwards, get my buttons right. I want to go up to an Atari 800 and I'll go out of there. And I should actually save that for next time. And yeah, now I'm in preppy, <laughs> so uh, we should be able to use the controls for this. And I want to ch check and see if I can use my um, 
uh, want to use my um, Atari joystick at some point, which is USB joystick. There's a cloak button. Which one is it? Oh, yeah, it's that one. Okay, cool. It's got to fill in all the spaces. You guys, you could lose a whole afternoon easily. <laughs> and the thing is, is that, you know, now I'm playing the Atari sitting here like this, and my peripheral vision, you know, I just have this to the side, but I don't have the rest of the room. I feel like very much like I did when I was a kid and, and, and had the Atari set up in the corner of a room and I just got absorbed just playing it and you know with the VR headset on just the world around you moves just slightly in terms of you know your peripheral vision it just feels real my cloak button get past again oh shit let go I only had a certain amount of cloak What can I say, guys? Play every single Atari game. It's just, again, it just, it's just an incredible time to enjoy VR now that with the um, uh, with the arcade time capsule uh, for just the realism of those machines, and now with this for like home console environment and a place to watch movies and set it up in a really homely way. It's it's something else. Now, I'm not a Commodore person and um, it's just, you know, <laughs> just even on. And it just boots to basic at the moment. So I think there's some configuration because I've got a card in the back. I did try, but yeah, it's booting to basic. So got to fix that at some point. Have a look at some Commodore stuff. I put it in here um, more because they've modelled the Commodore 64 and they haven't modelled the Atari 800, which would be awesome, but they haven't done that yet, guys. So, um, same deal with the Amiga at the moment. At least you've got a bit of a, uh, an issue. It will run it up, but it crashes the game. And so I've got a little bit of configuration to work out. And this is not really the ideal monitor and stuff for the Amiga. I like, did you hear the sound of the floppy disk? Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, I get the program file. So it'd be really nice when they actually model the, the Amiga as well and you get that floppy disk sound. They do that with the Atari guys and have the Atari 800 and the 800, um, 810 disk drive. Man, that would be an absolute heaven, heaven hearing that Atari 810 disk drive clunk and chang and carry on. So yeah, so that's... Uh, not working at the moment, we, but we do have the old Sony PlayStation. Uh, come back here a bit. Actually, what? Uh, oh, I didn't have a, a label for that. It's been out three takedown. I love how you, again you can just push the. <laughs> it's so cool. All right, fire that up. Ah, oh, and uh, just the sound, guys of that it's coming back a bit where's my inception top <gasps> guys it's gone <laughs> it's gone i think when i bought that big arcade machine in it would have smashed it because i haven't got it locked oh there it is it's down there you can see it it's behind rt let's see move it out the way there we go <laughs> we've got to have that guys we've got to know that we're, we're in artificial uh, virtual reality keep me sane uh, right, so we've got to select language here. Um, go 60 hertz television. Even it does all this correct, uh, correctly. We can go yes, use 60 hertz. Challenge everything. Challenge everything. And look, I don't know, I don't, well, I don't think I will have this set up here. Let me just move into movement mode. I can let that just carry on. I don't know if I have the PlayStation. I like, I really need the PlayStation on the big screens. So I'll probably swap that around at some point, but this was just an initial setup, guys. 
it was quite a bit of time doing this, although not as much as you might think. Once you get the hang of it, you can actually move stuff around and build your room pretty quickly. Um, having said that, it does still take some time, but it's fun. It's so much fun, guys, setting all this stuff up how you want it. Um, it's, it's, it's a game in itself. So yeah, anyway, guys, we've got uh, PlayStation 1. Oh, sorry, PlayStation 2. Now we've got PlayStation 1 up the top here. Fire that one up. Turn this TV off. And this one. Ah, oh, that beautiful PlayStation sound. I'll turn this TV off too. Oh, and of course, you know, I'm sitting down, so let me stand up. And we've got Crash Bandicoot. It's a phony. <laughs> of course, some of the assets that came with the program couldn't have license names, but other people have since released um, assets, user-generated content with the proper licenses. So let me just turn that down in the background. And again, while I'm just standing here, I might just, uh, you know, just come back a little bit in this corner. Just to, again, guys, just to give you a bit of a look of the, the area here. Now, I will say, because some of you guys I haven't really mentioned it yet, um, that this is EMU VR that I'm obviously doing this in. These shelves give it away. But the people that know EMU VR will be like, well, how did you change out the furniture? Because there's some furniture that sort of stays static in here. Uh, and I've just covered it up. I've actually built shelves over the bed and the bricks and everything to create that desk. It's normally a bed there and it's normally a chest of drawers where the TV is there and I've inset the TV. So all these little tricks um, and also a desk around the back, a blue desk. In fact, what I can do, if I actually flick around over the side of the room, guys, what I'll do is I'll load up the default, what you get as a default. Now, this won't be exactly what you get as a default because what it will have is it will have my posters, my wallpaper, my wood floor, um, because they're all things that uh, I, you, you have to change as, as some files, so they're set files. But let me just show you what this room looks like. If you just went into EMU VR and you'll see, like you see this desk here at the moment and the desk here over the back and also the front of this wooden piece around that TV and the fireplace and everything. Let's see what it looks like if we load the default. And it's dark, guys. <laughs> we need to turn the light on. And we've been robbed. <laughs> we've been robbed. So this is what it looks like when you first go into MUVR, you know, the pizza boxes and stuff. But as I said, you'll have, to, you'll have the standard wallpaper. You won't have the black bedspread. You'll have the yellow, that color all over the bedspread. But that's covered up with my brickwork and stuff. You actually see the bottom of this black bedspread underneath my desk. It's just the tricks that I've done. I've covered up this entire desk, put the couch in front of it, right? But you can see a little bit of that blue shell for what we had before. See some of my posters now, the J.R. Ewing. This is nothing in the way. And yeah, no extra TVs, um, extra little pictures down here, which you couldn't see because I'd covered up all those drawers. Uh, so yeah, this is what you get, guys. This is the standard when you first come in and you can go in here and start moving stuff around and nothing is locked down. So everything you can just sort of pick up and, and you know and make a bit of a mess so you have to learn how to lock things in place otherwise stuff just goes flying everywhere but hey I'll show you how to do all that uh, another time so yeah let's uh let's fire back up into our VIP lounge and here we are guys and we're back and it is a little dark I mean let's get to turn the light on here you can see all this in, in, in the bright light. Um, but when you first load in your room, 
everything is off, even though well, the TV's on, but um, the actual things running are, are, are all off. So normally what you do, just get myself in position here, sort of just show you. Ah, up down and onto my couch. And then I normally go, right, let's fire up the Atari. And I'll fire that up. Okay, let's fire up the fireplace. And there we go. Fires that up. Fire up the fish tank. There we go. And uh, then, you know, we can get a movie playing. <coughs> I'll just turn that down, copyright, and yeah, fire up the Astros. Um, you know, if I wanted a little more, you can. Actually, oh, there's a little desk lamp here. I could put that on the little extra bit of lighting if I wanted that. Um, if I want to get really crazy, guys, I can just <laughs> fire up the Star Wars. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take that off the wall. Yes. Luke, I am your father. So many things, guys, to enjoy in this space. Um, I uh, notice one of my lights is actually off here too. Put these little lights and the shelf, and I could you move those around. And hey, maybe you want to get a little bit of disco action going. Here we go. <laughs> disco ball. And what I really like what they've done with this disco ball, you can see how the lights go into the CRT and just softly you can see it like they get the light gets absorbed by the TV just like it does in real life it's very very clever that that little bit of attention to detail has been done all right guys well where do we go from here um, if you like this content then please consider like and subscribing if you want to see a journey and more information different ways I've done this, set these things up. I do little little videos to show each of those. So much to it and to learn, but at the same token, it's relatively easy to learn. And you all can do it. If you've got a VR headset, it is PC VR. You can't load this, side load it on your Quest um, uh, headsets, unfortunately. It is a PC VR, but you can still use it with Quest, um, with P PC VR. Um, so get in it and and enjoy it and ask questions get over to the spaces forum now discord forum now the thing is as i'll let you know right now guys is that emu vr there's a, there's a couple of things here for you guys that are interested in actually setting some stuff up this this is all for you the emu vr has been out for i think it's like eight years like this has been around for a long time and been slowly progressing and I looked at it very early on in the piece. I remember looking very early on in the piece. Um, I'm actually going to sort of move around a little bit here as well as we do this. Um, and I thought it was cool, but I thought it was pretty limited uh, back then because there was only certain props and bits and pieces. And it looked like a really neat idea. And of course, it, it was beta and it's still beta. Um, and I was hoping one day they would have all these extra things in terms of props and stuff so you could decorate and make the room your own and have arcade machines and stuff like, you know. And all of that is now possible. But the thing is, is that I think about a year ago, for whatever reason, the developers have actually stopped allowing people to get into their Discord forum. And so no one else can get in. And that was about the time... Um, they started actually building this user-generated content with all these extra things that you can now download. Well, if you're not in the disc, in the in their Discord forum, in the MUVR Discord forum, you can't get access to any of this stuff, guys. And I'm not in there. I'm not in there. I, I actually I sent a request actually uh, directly via email. I think I probably shouldn't have done that because I think somewhere it says don't send requests by email. But I thought I'd, I'd give it a try because I'm so interested in it and I'd love to participate more 
in it directly but I can't and like many of you guys out there who may be in the same position you might be um, a little bit disappointed with that and the cool thing though well it's not so much cool but lucky I guess is there's a few YouTubers that have actually released the updated version of MUVR which supports this user generated content and also release packs of the user generated content itself. Now I know it's not all of the content it's just some of the content but there's a lot um, that's been released and I won't release stuff myself I won't copy stuff and re-release it um, I don't know what the terms that they're operating under because I can't get the Discord forum to find out. So I don't know, but um, look, I'll leave it up to these YouTubers that have already made the stuff available publicly. I will provide links to those people in my Discord forum and you're welcome to go check those guys out and thank them and so forth and uh, get it from their Google Drives and whatnot. Um, as always, with setups like this, you know, you need ROM files and all that stuff. Um, don't ask for ROM files. You need to source that stuff all yourself. But other than that, guys, I'm happy to host and have the discussion around EMUVR at the Spaces Discord forum. So if you want a place to hang out and discuss all things EMUVR, then please join me until they open up the main uh, Discord forum and we can all hopefully head over there at some point. Until then, join me. I'm happy to share my knowledge and what I know so far. Um, I've still got some challenges that I need to resolve as well. Um, so hopefully I'll get those resolved with some of your your own thoughts and uh, experiences. And also, you know, there's an opportunity there to uh, link to any other content, again, outside of the Spaces Discord forum, but if there's ex some external links, Again, uh, you know, with external links, guys, you know, you, you just be vigilant, like always, with anything that's external. Uh, but you have the opportunity, if you do due diligence, to get all the right files, set yourself up, and, um, yeah, join in the discussion. And let's, you know, get this going as much as we can. And hopefully one day, A, we'll get access to the official Discord, and B, they you know, they release the, the formal update to the general public and we get access to all the user-generated content. The stuff that's been released already, guys, is just incredible um, in terms of quality. And this has no ending bounds. You know, I, I look at some people, you know, some man caves in the US and you know, a lot of sports orientated um, rooms and setups and stuff. Well, you know, there's, you could do that. You could have all your sports team memorabilia assets, you know, people creating that as custom content. Um, I will touch on another video showing also the fact that I believe there's going to be a version where the fixed furniture, so the shelves and stuff, which you can't move, which is why I've had to do things like, you know, cover up the bed. Um, there's the black bed shed. Uh, it's a sheet, guys. You see it there? Um, but yeah, I believe there is a version coming out uh, which will allow you to just do a whole room how you want it. And who knows, maybe even shape your room differently. The, the possibilities now is, is incredible. And this is really why I wanted to share this video, video with you guys. A, to show what's possible, what's coming, and what is available right now. Um, and we should get excited about this because this is just another another amazing VR experience which just is incredible for people that don't have the space or the means to set up something like this in their house you can do it <laughs> you can do it guys all you need is your VR headset and a, and a suitable PC which again isn't cheap but still cheaper probably than collecting all this memorabilia so that's it guys that is it for this episode i really do hope you enjoyed it it just blows me away oh look a quest 3 vr headset i wonder what happens if i put this on wow what the heck what the heck
Uh, some sort of room, guys, out in the middle of nature somewhere. We have a beautiful sunset. <laughs> we are VR within VR, guys. This is crazy. I mean, what more can we get out of VR? We don't already have. Oh shit. 